Today's High Performance Podcast is brought to you by Josh Vegan Digital. It's where you'll find our revolutionary blueprint course. There's only one place that you can go from zero to hero over a weekend by watching the incredible blueprint. It's everything you'll need to be that million dollar agent. Prospecting, listing, negotiation, and growth. Broken up into short 15 minute pieces, skip to the content you need now or watch from the beginning to end. Only on Josh Vegan Digital. Welcome to High Performance, the podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Alexander Phillips. Alexander, one of the big conversations without a doubt is that agents have got to learn how to get into that advisory role and really having better quality conversations with buyers and sellers. And there's no doubt right now that sellers are saying, hey, in some of these marketplaces and particularly in regional markets and in places that are not literally in a city ring, there is a lot of price reductions and things that are going on. And people have got to understand that like the price of capital has substantially changed. But I was having a quick look at it the other day, back in 2021, you were being assessed as though interest rates were at 5% when you're going to go and get a home loan. Now, when you're in a position, you're actually going out there, you're being assessed at circa 10% in terms of your ability to repay. By the time you have a look at the APRA buffer rate, you have a look at what the banks had in terms of margin and the official cash rate of the day. Alex, if that changes the spending power on how much people can actually spend, is that an important conversation to be having with your sellers about why there might actually be some challenges um, in the marketplace and why buyers not might not be in a position that they can pay the sort of numbers that they were paying only two years ago. Yes, it is. It's, it's super important. It's about, um, it's also, you, you're under, getting an understanding of why they're selling, what, what what they're going to next. And, I, you know, should I be selling because my, my house is worth less? But if you're buying and selling in the same market, or particularly if you're going up, you're making that the gap's a lot shorter. So it's actually understanding that. But I think the good thing is with where we sell it in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, all it does is compress buyers down. <coughs> You know, they might go from two million to one five, the the eight one million go down to eight hundred. So, it, it, the, well, the good thing is there's so much depth that you've just got to. Yeah, and they're, they're all things that you need to explain to those sellers or buyers. And that's the, and, and you know the buyers are trying to sort of talk you down. You know that's fine, but you know we've got a whole pool of buyers that we didn't before because they've come down. And you know and they 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 can see value and they're chomping at the bit ready to buy. I saw a lot of real estate agents jump. You know quite quickly when they saw America change in interest rates and New Zealand change in interest rates. But in Australia, we've actually still got a cheaper cash rate than the, both of those markets, even though they've had a substantial change on their cash rate. Is it important for people to realise that we're not America, we're not New Zealand, and that maybe there were some articles in the AFR that were suggesting that. If we had a different governor at the RBA, we might have even seen an increase in interest rates in maybe earlier this year in March and maybe even in August. So you've got to realise that literally we're, we've been pretty lucky that it's actually been a lower cash rate compared to the majors for longer than what's actually happening in other economies. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, everyone's just, it's so pegged to interest rates. All oh, the market's going to go up when interest rates go down. And, you know, like the, 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 the one thing that I keep telling, you know, you know, those vendors that are hanging out, well, we had 10 rate rises, 13 rate rises, sorry, the market went up 10%. So what does it mean it's going to go up when the interest rates go down? Not necessarily. I've seen interest rates, you know, go down and the market go down too, you know, over the last 20 years. So, um, you know, you, there's other economic factors that are, you know, coming into play at the moment with not just interest rates. And, and this is the big conversation is that literally the CBA actually came out a few weeks ago. They reduced all variable interest rates by 0.25%. And also to the long-term deposit rate on, if I go and put 100 grand in the bank, that's actually come down by 0.8%. So what that goes to show me is, is that literally probably the longer term view over the course of the next year is that we're going to be lucky to get a 0.5% reduction in interest rates over the course of the next 12 months. If you have a look at the big banks in terms of being the lead indicators of what they predict that the RBA is actually going to do. So when you hear a lot of buyers sitting on the fence and say, I'm waiting for interest rates to go down, where to? Because it's not going back down to 2021 levels. And ultimately, from a seller's point of view, what we did see in New Zealand is that when the headline was eight interest rate decreases ahead, what actually happened is that all the sellers just locked on price and nothing happened. So it's really important. You've got to be careful what you wish for is that at moment, we've got a really good quality trading environment. If a buyer's walking through an open for inspection, they know the interest rate of the day, they know their budget, they know where they're approved to, you can actually do a really good quality transaction. And the best thing is if they're a buyer-seller, Alex, if you know that I'm quoting to, it's probably going to sell around two. In previous markets, if I was quoting to, it might have literally flown to 2.5 during that COVID era. So this is a really important thing to find the market of the day. Who are the buyer-sellers that are going to be buying up and actually have better quality conversations to get them ready for the next market cycle? 